Well, hello. Come right on in. You're it, Father Fish. Nice to have you with us. On Maple Street saying, that's great, Father Fish. We need to find some new spots to collect to help with the diversity of creatures we find. Really good point. Um, the whole issue of diversity is one I really want to dig into. And I'm, I've mentioned yesterday, I'm having trouble figuring out quite how to get into it. Uh, Why not Wyoming said these got confused on Discord yesterday. You did get in though. Um, and you did fine. Go back and try it again. It's really, uh, it's really quite simple. You may be overcomplicating it. Try it again. See if you can get it worked out. Uh, you will thoroughly enjoy it. Why not? Um, uh, to back to uh, uh, to Maple Street. Divert. He, now he's talking about diversity in fish and and other uh, species, fish and invertebrate species. Um, when I talk about diversity, I'm talking about not only that, I'm not, I'm also talking about um, um, not just uh, fish and invertebrates, but, but plants and bacteria, microscopic uh, life. The greater, here's the principle. The principle is really very simple. Bacteria can grow in colonies. If any of you have ever seen a Petri dish, a Petri dish is typically, once it's mature, shows one or two, maybe three colonies of bacteria that came off of whatever the, the source was. And those are growing, but it's a specific, it's, it's several specific kinds of bacteria. In a fish tank that has a limited variety of bacteria, which nearly all fish tanks do, it becomes all too easy for that one back for one of those bacteria to explode exponentially in the presence of excess nutrition, for example, and to begin depleting the tank of oxygen and breaking down the ability of the tank to sustain itself as a biological balanced environment. The fix for that is additional kinds of bacteria. Getting rid of that bacteria does not solve the problem. It simply creates it again down the line. So killing off bacteria when there's a bacterial bloom is not the solution long-term to the, to, the, to the problem because the problem is not that there is bacteria. The problem is that the types of bacteria in the environment are too limited. And so one is able to take over and dominate all the rest. The solution to that is a wider range of bacteria, more types of bacteria coming in that struggle with each other and seek a balance among themselves. That's the solution. How you get to that solution is a matter of bringing in, <clears throat> bringing in culture from a wide variety of sources. Now, the truth is there are some sources that already have a wide variety of bacteria in them. Mangrove swamps are a case in point. Mangrove swamps have a very rich bacterial and biological culture in the substrate so that by bringing that into the environment, bringing it into your fish tank, you're greatly expanding the variety of bacteria and the, and the, the, uh, the, the balance of all of the organisms 
within the tank. So it improves the quality of the balance of the system. Somebody had an interesting point yesterday, and I'm glad I caught it and was able to pick up on it. They were making the point that by adding more fish to a tank, a balanced tank, you're throwing off the balance. And that's literally not true. Unless, of course, you're insane and put so many fish in that they don't have room to swim and they burn off all the oxygen immediately and begin dying and create a cascade effect. That's not, that's not what we're talking about. If you have, for example, a 10 gallon tank with 10 fish in the tank and it's been running for a couple of months there would be no difficulty at all in putting another 10 fish in that tank what would happen is the organics in the tank the um, the, the, the biologicals rather in the tank the, the microscopic life would would multiply in order to absorb the additional nutrients that the additional fish would be creating. Um, the fish would release more, more ammonia, more CO2 that would be absorbed by the plants, creating more oxygen and creating more uh, um, nutrition for the roots. It would, in other words, it would balance itself. The balance would go, would go from here to here. It would go up, the balance would increase. The diversity would increase to some extent, but more importantly, just the, the sheer quantity, the sheer bio load, the mass of biological life in the tank would increase exponentially, not just from the fish, but all the other life forms that are in balance and in harmony with those fish. So the whole level would be raised. Similarly, if you reduce the fish load, this goes down as well. So a balanced tank is like this. It fluctuates, but it fluctuates in balance. It fluctuates in, in, uh, in relationship with all of the elements in relationship to each other. It's not like this kind of thing. It's not at war with itself. It's, uh, it's in balance with itself. It's literally what balance means. And it's not something that exists purely in an, in an instant and in a certain place. I think that's one of the problems, one of the major problems that people have trying to understand the global environment because they think of the global environment as rigid and, and unchanging. And so any fluctuation breaks it down. And just the opposite is true. Any fluctuation causes the whole environment to, to change as compensation for that, uh, for that uh, change that occurs in one place. So that in point of fact, the changes are so dynamic and the diversity is so broad that, that any changes that are occur are like the earth breathing. And, and that's a good way to, to, to kind of understand what life on earth is doing. It's literally breathing. It's literally growing, shrinking, growing. It's, but it's doing it in, in, in a kind of harmony that in, in a very literal sense cannot be broken. Now that's not to say we can't uh, release uh, uh, 10,000 atomic weapons or a volcano cannot release uh, uh, 10 billion tons of dust in the air and not cause that to break down, it certainly will. But it is to say that that the, the, uh, the less than 1% impact that, that human beings, for example, have on the environment is of no more consequence than the impact of ants on, on the environment. It just isn't there. To use that for political reasons is a whole other can of worms that really deserves to be attacked in, in, in a very direct way. Uh, 
we have precluded ourselves from such here on this channel, but I try in every way I can to teach basic principles of life in order to be able to help people wrap their brains around the notion that 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 life on this earth just as in their fish tank can achieve a balance and a harmony that is very difficult to break down unless you do something really drastic and dramatic it isn't going to break down i've thought about doing a test and i haven't figured out quite how to do it yet of um uh, a tank with an uh, an inch of gravel in it and a couple of fish maybe and a tank with a, a one into a three inch deep substrate and some plants and dump a can of food in one and dump a can of food in the other. Now I've got to make sure I don't put so much in that it overwhelms both systems. But to be able to put a substantial amount in both such that what will happen very clearly is that one will be very quickly out of balance and break down. The one with the, the gravel in the bottom, which has a dearth, a, a, a lack of adequate biological activity in order to be able to manage that. And the other, which has a, a wealth of biological activity and will be able to assimilate. That's the principle I would like to be able to demonstrate. Um, I just have to figure out a way to do it. Maybe some clever person out there can do a better job than me. So there's my rant for the day. And it didn't get upset or anything, see? <laughs> Well, I hope you found something you've never seen before. Have a great day. Nice having with us. Come on back.